All right, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video series, I'm going to attempt to take uh, you, the viewer, all the way through uh, from the beginning of the design process all the way through to a completed website. So I'm expecting this to be pretty long and uh, don't know how long it's going to take uh, to finish everything, but I, I want to just sort of go through all the steps in the process and record and talk my way through it and um, this would be a great series for anyone who um, you know how to make a website you feel like you're confident to begin working with clients and uh, you want to sort of figure out the process of how does it work for the client how do you move from you know what kinds of questions to ask what kind of things do you uh, information do you get at the beginning how do you take that information and translate it into design? And then how do you translate that design into code uh, for a website? So the assumption is, uh, like a lot of freelancers, you're a one-man shop. If you're only wanting to do design, uh, you know, maybe you'll just go through to the design part. Uh, if you're only wanting to do development, you know, this will help you to understand how to work with designers and what sorts of things designers are thinking about <clears throat> as opposed to what kinds of things you're thinking about uh, as a developer and uh, sort of how to position yourself, how to bridge that gap between design and development um, and vice versa if you're a designer. These are the kinds of concerns that a developer would have uh, as you get into the development process. What can you do to make that, uh, to bridge that gap between design and development and be ready for the kinds of questions or uh, what sorts of deliverables do you need to provide uh, that type of thing uh, we're gonna cover in this first video uh, just we've done we've uh, we've made some assumptions we've gotten the project <clears throat> we're talking to the client we've had our first meeting and maybe even our first contact and so we're we've sent out some sort of survey or we've gone through these questions uh, in a first meeting with the client uh, and we've gotten their answers. So these are the answers to the questions that I need to get started as, as a designer. And then we'll move on into uh, things like uh, wireframes and, and the actual design, a prototype. And then once we're satisfied with that, we'll move uh, forward from there. Uh, but the idea is we're going to talk about these question answers. In the next video, we're going to um, do some sketching, uh, just in a sketchbook, um, thinking about the answers that we've gotten, what are priorities, what's the hierarchy of each page, what are the pages that need to happen, and then just what are some different ideas that we can come up with to solve the problems that are on the page. And then we'll move into creating actual digital wireframes and then from the wireframes, we'll flesh those out into sort of a medium to high fidelity um, prototype that's actually working, but it won't be in code, it'll just be design. And then we'll move that into uh, the development phase. So let's take a look first at the, uh, the survey results so the larger questions are our questions and then we have the answers um, so describe the website that we're developing just so that we have a sense of from their words what is it that they want so this is uh, a website that has a couple of different types of product lines and they want to educate the viewer on both the variety and the quality of the product uh, and then we want to compel them to buy so great visuals uh, some articles activities how to's things like that that are sort of content uh, that can be pushed to the website and uh, they're related to the products so what are you trying to accomplish what are the goals of the website this is really important uh, that you understand what they want the website to be able to do so there are two types of goals usually there are user goals so the user comes to a website wanting to do something 
And then there's also business goals. And when you're working with a client, you really need to understand what are the business goals? What is the business trying to do with this website? If it's uh, not their main website, but just sort of a product website uh, that exists apart from the main website, or if you're building out a new section of the website as a part of sales or marketing or a landing page or something, what is the website trying to do? When the user comes there, what does the business need the user to do? And then what does the user need to do when they come to the website? What's their expectation? What of uh, being able to do something? So they followed an ad. When they get to the website, what is the expectation once they follow that ad? And then where those two things cross over, those are going to be uh, your main points of interest. In fact, you should probably push those to the top of the website so that people make sure that they see whatever those actions are <clears throat> so that both the business goals and the user goals can come together and that's sort of the sweet spot. Um, it's not that there you can't add in those user goals that aren't necessarily related to the business or business goals that aren't necessarily related to what the user wants to do. So those are sort of secondary uh, types of goals and you can build those into the website. Uh, that would be things like uh, signing up for a newsletter. The user may not even know that there is a newsletter to sign up for, but that might be a business goal uh, to build an email list, but and the user might find some value in that once they get to the page, but that's not necessarily a primary user goal. Uh, but it might be one of the top business goals, so you want to make sure that you have that option available on the website. <clears throat> uh, so they want to have the four demographics below, uh, find the set of products or uh, pages that apply to them. So, and then we have, you know, sort of these four different uh, people. Uh, they get valuable content, they understand the brand and the products, and then they move over to the buying page, uh, which is a different website. And describe the profiles of the users that you're targeting. So we want to get a sense of who are the people uh, that you're going to be targeting, one, with marketing and advertising, two, who are going to be interested in your product to be able to search through a, some sort of search engine to find you. So we want to make sure that we have appropriate uh, style, we have appropriate layout, we have appropriate, we're making appropriate choices in both design and development for these people. If your demographic is older, we need to take that into consideration. If your demographic is uh, very young, so 14 to 18, that's also a consideration. Uh, if it's sort of generic, then that's also a consideration because uh, then we need to design for a wide range and not be quite so niche or specific. Uh, so our four uh, types of users are parents of children who like stickers. This is a sticker book and sort of an activity book uh, those are the two main products, stickers and activity books. Um, people who teach in a Christian church and people who do uh, journaling. Uh, if you're not very familiar, there are some Bibles that have little margins and things like that that you can write notes uh, as you're studying the Bible. And also people who are just doing sort of crafts, uh, crafts as um, enjoyment, as a, a way to uh, do art as an adult. Um, some people just love to make things, they're makers. And then also uh, any retailers who might be interested, uh, physical retailers who would be interested in selling these stickers or these products uh, on a rack in a store. <clears throat> so we have a pretty uh, varied set of users and we have to kind of think about each of them and how we're going to break this up so that each user is directed to the right space. Um, <clears throat> because obviously retailers uh, are very different than parents. Um, they're looking for different things. They're expecting uh, different types of things uh, to come about. How do we know if the site is successful? This is not very clear. And sometimes you're going to run into this with clients. What we're looking for here is really some sort of metric. Um, what, how can we gauge uh, actual data to see if this is successful. So we got a consistent flow. 
excuse me, of qualified visitors coming from this website to go to the product pages where they can buy the actual product. Um, this is, you know, a consistent flow of qualified visitors is not, it does tell me something, but it doesn't give me something to gauge. So what is consistent? Is that one every day? Is that one a week? Is that a hundred a day? Or is that a thousand a week? You know, what is sort of, you would go back to the person or if they gave you this answer while you were talking to them, you would say, okay, I hear you saying consistent, but to you, um, what does a consistent flow look like? Like, is there a number that you can think of or a number range that you can think of that would say, okay, if we hit this number range, let's say uh, anywhere from 100 to 500 a week, right? So that would be a consistent user flow. So then that's something that we can track uh, through metrics to see, are we getting 100 to 500 people from point A to point B each week? And then if we're not, we can go back and look in the data and see where are the visitors getting stopped and how can we sort of turn on that spigot and get more people flowing. So <clears throat> this uh, is something that I personally would go back to the client and I would say, I hear you saying a consistent flow. Um, let's talk about that. Like a, what, what is a number? Do you know a number? Or in comparison to something else? Or let's just, let's start with some number. What number seems good and right? Um, what number do you need in order to reach your business goals? That's also a good uh, a good start as well. So if they need if they need a thousand qualified leads coming to the part where they're about to buy and their buying rate is only 2% once they hit the buy page. So that's a thousand people a week. 2% of those are going to make purchases which is only what? <clears throat> uh, 100 that's a 20 people right so if 2% of those people are buying so you got 20 purchases a week is that enough or do you need 10,000 qualified leads and then all of a sudden you know we got to start really doing some different things in order to get us moving in that direction and then how long over the first year is that thousand something that we can ramp up to is that 10,000 something that we can ramp up to month over month because the website hopefully is going to be gaining in popularity it's going to be getting traction on search engines uh, but it takes some time starting from scratch for a, a website to do that uh, so unless you're going to have a large push or you're going to be able to get this out in mass to a lot of people um, it's going to be hard to hit that 10,000 number the first week that your website is up and going uh, maybe not though if you have a large brand or something like that and you push out a tweet or a series of uh, posts on Instagram and all of a sudden you have 50,000 visitors the first week maybe that 10,000 is not so difficult to get to so it just sort of depends on the brand depends on the size of the company depends on the marketing budget depends on the marketing strategy so lots of things are dependent on things that you can't control so that's why you leave that number you leave that metric in place for the client to be able to say this is a realistic metric for us and if they don't know encourage them to go back and talk to their team and say we need to come up with some sort of like primary metric that we're gauging that we can track and then we can make decisions uh, in the future based off of this number it could be four things it could be one thing could be 10 things that they want to try to do and then we have to prioritize those um, we have to prioritize those metrics because we need to know how to create the site so that we can not necessarily manipulate the user but you want to see how can we make it easier for the user to do and to meet some of these uh, to get to these metrics so if we're not getting people from one side to the other, why? And then we need to figure out how. Uh, is there a way that we can move them from one to the other? Is it an expectations issue? 
is it discoverability issue you know what is what's the problem and then you can try some different experiments along the way in order to try to see if if unearthing something putting it higher on the page putting it closer to something else if those things um, can get the needle moving a little bit farther uh, for your particular metrics that are important to you and your business okay that was a lot but when you start working for clients you need to start speaking the language of business <coughs> whatever is important to them you have to be able to translate that and put elements on the page that are going to help them to meet their goals uh, otherwise what's the point of having the website out there um, it's just for fun at that point but once you start working with clients it's not just for fun anymore you're trying to actually design a workflow for the user to go through that meets their goals and for the business to put out there so that the user can help them meet their business goals so again you want to bring together those two places um, so if more people are buying the product those people are happy to be able to get to the product and make the purchase uh, more quickly more easily whatever it is but that also helps the business by selling more product so you can see where those two things uh, sort of line up and come together and then finally uh, what can users uh, get or do on the website this is actually you know sort of toward user goals uh, what are they going to be able to get out of the website how is it going to meet their needs so they're going to get free content uh, downloads or articles uh, or activities so these are actually things that are going to help them in their real life uh, doing things with children or with people um, uh, full understanding of what's provided and uh, we'd love for them to see the inside of the books and close-ups of stickers so um, <clears throat> this could probably be eliminated that's not really much of a um, much help for us necessarily but this is you know we're gonna need to be able to provide downloads we're gonna need to be able to provide uh, areas where people can uh, see activities or participate in activities somehow whether that's a video that's being produced that shows you how to do it step by step or whether it's creating a page with steps on it or uh, something we're gonna need to be able to provide a, a space for the user to go and particular activities for them to be able to find or follow and then an activities page so uh, we have a lot here there's not a lot written here but that gives us a lot of things to think about uh, going into the next step and the next step is going to be uh, doing some um, sketching out things like um, a site map so starting with a site map can help you uh, to architect sort of the high level architecture of okay this is going to connect to here and this will link to here and from this page you can get to these different things um, and figuring out things like user journeys so for a, if you're a parent so putting yourselves in the other shoes I'm a parent uh, I've come here from an advertisement or from a Facebook page that's saying I can do these different activities or whatever with my kids and use these stickers so from that premise walk me through how are you going to get me to the place that's of interest to me so that I can meet both my goals and you can meet your business goals at the same time so thinking about the different users we have uh, four different users here how can we get them once they hit the site how can we get them to move through a journey that makes sense to them that also funnels them down to a decision point where they have to make a decision um, there's a lot of different things to think about in that particular area do we give them a lot of freedom do we narrow them down to a decision uh, because you know they've already sort of followed down a particular path um, and that will be in the next episode and that's uh, something we call information architecture so you're basically architecting how the user goes through the site what is the site going to look like at a very high level um, all right if you have any questions or comments about this particular video or the series in general uh, or you have anything that you'd like to add to this um, please leave it in the comment section below 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and um, if you want to just wait for this I'll probably be just dripping these things out uh, on a weekly basis as I can get to them um, <clears throat> and I would like to hear in your comments do you prefer dripping the content out like this or do you prefer um, doing all the videos together and then releasing them together as a set uh, in a playlist or something like that so uh, I would be interested to hear what is your preference on that um, just as a viewer as someone who uses uh, YouTube or uses videos in the learning process because uh, that's always sort of a question that we have when we're doing uh, teaching on YouTube or videos on YouTube is how how to drip those things out how to make that content available uh, how do you consume the content? Do you want to just binge it? Do you get excited to wait for new content to come out? That kinds of things. Um, if you want to pay this forward, my videos are free. So if you want to pay it forward, the easiest way is to just click the thumbs up. And um, that actually helps it to be noticed in the YouTube algorithm as quality content, content that people are actually watching and interested in. Uh, commenting does that as well and sharing it uh, with your social network or um, friends, colleagues, whoever. Uh, that's uh, super helpful to help the videos get noticed uh, in the end. And the money I make from these videos is not much, but that's not the point. What keeps me going is knowing that I'm helping the next generation. So I'm using my experience in in this series especially of working with clients to be able to help people who are just entering into becoming developers or becoming designers or becoming freelancers who do everything from start to finish there are a lot of lessons learned that can help you along the way and you don't have to necessarily make those same uh, make those same mistakes having a process going through a process and knowing your process every single time is actually going to help you uh, not only with your business goals, but also it's going to help you to uh, set expectations for the project, which is going to help you with your client relations, which is a big, huge part of this when you start working with clients is uh, managing expectations and managing clients. So um, it's not just about the work. And it's not just about getting uh, the design right. And it's not just about uh, doing the code. Once you bring a client into the situation, it becomes client management as well. So some of these things like this will help you to direct the client because clients don't always know what they want, what they're looking for. So these questions are set up to sort of help them to begin on the right part of the path that helps you, which ultimately helps the client in the end uh, because you're trying to translate what they want into something like a website in the end. So. Uh, I think that's all for now. Uh, I'll be putting out the second video as soon as I can, but hopefully you've gotten some value out of this. Um, just, you know, these are basic questions that we ask on every project and that you should ask uh, at least on these projects. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.